welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today we're covering Irish Stout. Let's get right into the analysis. I have 22 Irish Stout recipes, 1 best of show, 12 gold, 6 silver, 1 bronze, and 2 award winning. Uh, the BJCP style is 15B, a black beer with a pronounced uh, roasted flavor, often similar to coffee. The balance can range from fairly even to quite bitter, with some more balanced versions having a little, a little malty sweetness and the bitter versions being quite dry. Um, well, this style is staying pretty stable, should be. This is uh, what Guinness is. It's one of the quintessential beer, beer styles we all know about, we all start out with. And uh, But we are seeing uh, some variation between the recipes, which kind of fits the description, um, ranging from bitter to malty. Original gravity, um, the mean was 1.047. Er, almost every recipe was outside of... Uh, the BJCP range uh, on the high side, um, which is which makes sense for competitions. You tend to do better in competitions with a higher gravity beer. Uh, my recipe will be right at the mean. Uh, for the IBUs, the range uh, for BJCP is 25 to 45, and the range of winning examples were range from 30 to 50, just shifted over a little bit towards the high range. Average was 41, and I will be at 37. My recipe, and the reason is we're seeing a shift downward in IBUs for this style. Uh, quite the opposite of many recipes we've covered so far. Um, for the color, uh, anywhere between 25 and 40 is the standard, um, with the range of winning recipes on the higher end, and mine will be, uh, sorry, the mean was 36 uh, SRM, and I will be in 57, or calculated 57. I think once you get uh, to a point you just uh, can't tell the difference anymore. Um, with regards to the malt percentages, base malt will average 67.6% of the grist, followed by uh, roast malt at 13.8% of the grist, an adjunct at 13.1% of the grist, toast at 26 and crystal at 2.5%. Um, when you look at just the recipes that use those malts, 100% of the recipes used a base malt. Uh, zooming in down here, um, I, I will end up being around 60% of the grist, just under the mean here of 67, I'm sorry, 50, 60 versus 67. When you zoom in on the specialty malts down here, if I do look at the next slide, 100% of the recipes used an adjunct. And 100% of the recipes used a roast malt. Um, here are their ranges, anywhere probably around 5 to 25% for both of those. Uh, the toasted malt, somebody used a 55% amber malt, which is a toasted malt that doesn't have any diastatic power. Um, that was an older recipe, I do, don't recommend it. Um, but only less than 10% of the recipes used a toasted malt. Um, and crystal malts around 40%, with a range between 2.5 to 10% of the grist. Um, I do plan to use a roast malt um, right at about 20% of the grist um, and a, sorry, an adjunct at 20% of the grist and a roast malt right at 15, just a little higher than their mean um, and then right on the mean for crystal malts. And the reason why my adjuncts and roasts are, uh, are a little higher than the average is because we're seeing these trend up over time. Um, the black curve is roasted malts. Uh, you can see it's getting around 15. You know, we had some as high as 22, 23 at some years. And then for the adjuncts, going all the way up to the 20s, we had many recipes where we had 20s. And these are flaked. This is flaked malts. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Um, base malts, um, majority were Maris Otter. I think this, this curve ended at 20%, that one recipe that used 55% amber. Um, but... Um, the mean was right here at about 75-76% of the grist. Uh, I'll get 100% of the recipes use a Maris Otter or Golden Promise or a British Two Row um, at 77% of the grist. I plan to be right there at 60%. I think we talked about that earlier. Um, a couple of recipes use acidulated, and I wanted to. I normally take the acidulated and lump it in with a pale malt. Um, but for this style, I wanted to break it out to see because Guinness has a sour element to it. Um, some some they take a little bit of sour mash and include it into the into the beer or into the wort uh, to give it some of that sour um, character. 
So for this one, I wanted to make sure that if somebody was trying to replicate that, that it was captured in my data set. So here, only a few recipes use it, acidulated malt, um, assumed to try to replicate that. We have one recipe using Munich. Um, crystal malts, um, highest incidence of crystals, care pills, none, in the, none over the one third threshold, but accumulative, accumulative uh, enough to warrant putting a uh, crystal malt into your malt bill. I will be using around 6% uh, care pills. Toasted malts, only two recipes. One used uh, amber malt, like I said, at 55%, and the other used melanoidin at somewhere less than 10%. Uh, roast malts, the most prominent is roasted barley. 90, about 90% of the recipes, 91% of the recipes used a roasted barley, and an average of 11.3% of the grist. The range anywhere for between 3 and 20%. Uh, just on roasted barley. Uh, next most prominent was chocolate. 50% of the recipes used a chocolate malt at an average of 5.4% of the grist. Um, and the next is black patent. 41% of the recipes used a black or black patent malt at 6.1% of the grist. I plan to be uh, low on the roast, roasted barley, right around 7%, uh, right around 3.5% for the chocolate and right around 5% on the black patent. Um, adjuncts, uh, most prominent flaked barley, one recipe used flaked oats, anywhere between five and 32% of the grist. 73% um, of the recipes used a flaked barley. The average was 22, 22%, and I will be right at 20% of the grist. Um, bittering hops used, um, most prominent was EKG, followed by Willamette, Nugget, Bullion, Northern Brewer, Magnum, Fuggles, Challenger, and Northdown. We had nine different bittering hops used. Uh, I will be using EKG for this recipe. Flavor hops, we had two different flavor hops used, EKG or Bramling Cross. I will not be using flavor hops. Aroma hops, only EKG was used, and I won't be using them in my recipe. Um, all right, so the late hop additions, only 18%, 1 in 5 of the recipes used uh, flavor hop and even fewer less half of that uh, one in ten use the uh, aroma hops uh, so 18 percent and nine percent respectively if they were used the range was between 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 ounce per gallon for flavor and 0 0.05 to around 0 0.0 or 0 0.15 ounce per gallon for um, the aroma hops so you can see the metric equivalent over here uh, so not a lot of hops used and not many recipes using them i'm not going to recommend using either of these in my uh, recipe uh, for the mash type we had uh, 15 percent did a step mash and 85 percent did a single infusion mash i will be doing a single infusion mash uh, the, the different rests here one recipe each used um, an acid rest, a protein rest, a beta rest, and then all of them did the sacrification rest. Um, the average for the alpha rest was 151 Fahrenheit or 66 Celsius for an average duration of 60 minutes. Pretty bog standard stuff. And I'll be right on the, the mean for that. Boil duration was anywhere between 60 and 90 minutes with the bias towards 60. Uh, 63 minutes was the mean. I will be at a 60 minute boil. Um, the yeast, unsurprisingly, uh, White Lab 004, Y-Yeast 1084, which is the Guinness. I'm missing an N there. I had six different yeasts used. Guinness strain was first. Nottingham was used in quite a few recipes. The Chico strain, Whitbread, Edme. I'm saying that wrong. Somebody correct me or put in the comments what how I should pronounce this. And then Worthington White Shield. This is one of some of the older recipes used these. Uh, I think this is S33. Um, if you're looking at it, Fermentus still carries this yeast, so if you want to play with that one, that's their S33 strain. But by far, uh, the Guinness or Nottingham are most prolific strains used for the style. Uh, I will be using the Guinness strain. Uh, didn't have a lot of water chemistry, so take this data with a grain of salt. I had two data points. Um, the calcium was at 84 parts per million, magnesium 6, sodium 26, uh, sulfates 86 and chlorides 101. Only big ranges. I will be right on the on the uh, averages for the key sulfates and chlorides here. 
Uh, fermentation temperatures, um, anywhere between 60 and 70 was a full sweep. And that also correlated to the Guinness strain. Um, the average uh, was 65.4 for all the, all the strains and 65 for both um, the next two most prominent, the Guinness strain was right at 65, and this was 65, 66 for Nottingham. Not a big change between them. Nottingham had a much narrower band of, of fermentation temperatures. I uh, plan to ferment at 65. Uh, other variables, the carbonation volumes were 2.17, a little low, but expected for this style. And the mash pH average was 5.5. All right, on to the Mean Brews recipe. Um, we'll start with about 50, 58-59% Mare Sauter uh, and about 20% Flaked Barley. Uh, we're going to go 7.5% Crisp Roast Barley. It's my favorite roast barley. 6% um, Carapils. There's my Crystal Malt. 4.5% Crisp Black Malt. And 3.5% Chocolate Malt. Let's talk a little bit about the ro uh, malt sensory analysis we did with our homebrew club. I tried to do a live video. It didn't go well. Out of these three uh, malts, um, we tasted two of them, the black malt and the roast barley. And these two right here from Crisp, of the seven that we tasted, were the two favorite uh, roasted malts. A um, little bit harsh, but much better flavor, better roasted malt character, um, and uh, were, were preferred. For chocolate malts, um, you can use Crisp here, That's the, or you can use Bryce. They were both... In my personal taste test, both excellent, um, but try to stick to those two, and uh, definitely for these others, try to stick to crisp. Um, for East East Kent Goldings, used about 37 IBUs uh, to match, you know, the trend down of IBUs for this style. Just one addition at 60 minutes, and then I'm going to use Y East 1084, which is the Irish Ale, um, also the Guinness strain. We're going to shoot for about 1.047 as our original gravity, 37 IBUs, which I talked about before. Um, that same water chemistry I presented, which 85 parts per million calcium, 0 magnesium, 26 sodium, 101 chloride, 86 sulfites, and wherever your bicarbonate uh, ends up being. My mash pH ended up being 5.43 without any acid additions, and I'm not going to put in any more calcium than um, what I needed to get to my calcium numbers here. So I could bring that up to the 5.5, which would be a benefit, but I don't want to go too high on my calciums. Infusion mash, 151 Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. I'm going to mash out sparge and boil for 60 minutes. I'm going to chill to 63 Fahrenheit or 17.2 Celsius. Oxygenate and pitch a one liter starter for my five gallon batch. That's 0.2 liters per gallon of Y yeast 1084. I'm going to ferment at 65 Fahrenheit or 18.3 Celsius. And when it gets right and on the bend of the curve starts getting uh, flat again and we see it start to, to level out, I'm going to raise the temperature up a couple of degrees to 67 Fahrenheit or 19 Celsius and hold for one to two weeks. Transfer to a bottle or keg and force carbonate or naturally carbonate to 2.2 volumes of CO2. All right, that's it for this episode. Uh, next one I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick one of my favorite styles, and we're going to do Belgian Golden Strong or a Duvel type uh, uh, clone. So um, tune in in a couple weeks. I'll try to get this one done a little bit faster than I have been. Um, also, make sure you check out Bacchus and Barley Corn. They do have this recipe up for sale. You can buy it fully with the yeast, with every grain and hop there is, or you can jump by just the grains. They give you a bunch of options. I've brewed up uh, a couple of their, uh, or one of their uh, kits so far. It turned out tremendously well. I love how they package um, the, the, the yeast. It, it came to me still cold, even though it is winter. Uh, in Texas, it's still warm, but the yeast came to me still cold. So please support Bacchus and Barley Corn um, they, for carrying uh, the Mean Brews recipes. Um, great, great shop. Jake's a great guy. Um, check it out. Uh, see you in a couple weeks. Thanks. Bye-bye.